Good morning. My name is Prophet Bernard L. Bernard Nelson Nation, and I want to welcome you to Prophetic Faculty. I believe that this series of um, lessons on the prophetic will bring us more understanding and will create an atmosphere of desire that will birth us into the realm of prophetic advantage. It's also my prayer that there will be prophetic prayers and impartation that will increase the prophetic oil, the prophetic unction, and activate the prophetic grace and gift within us. This morning, I'm going to deal with understanding the prophetic. And we are going to look at what is the prophetic and the importance of the prophetic. By the grace of God, I have been operating in the prophetic ministry for the past 20 years. 20 years ago, when the Lord started speaking to me and dealing with me about the prophetic, I was an immature person and out of immaturity, there were a lot of mistakes I made. And I believe that almost every prophet will have his, own, his or her own share of mistakes. And this mistake were due to lack of mentorship. And years ago, when the Lord told me, I am sending you to go and redefine the prophetic, the Lord told me, as part of what he has taught me, I should teach the generation I am in and the coming prophetic generation how to be able to be effective with their prophetic gift. I know there are a group of people who don't believe in the prophetic. They don't believe in it because they might have never had a genuine encounter with the prophetic. Some don't believe in it because um, they had a very bad experience with the prophetic and some saw how the prophetic has been abused and how others have been taken advantage of and been exploited and they closed up to the prophetic. But no matter which of the side you are coming from, there are enough evidence in the scriptures that point to the fact that the prophetic is a needed um, office or a needed gift in our dispensation when you look at ephesians chapter 4 ephesians chapter 4 the bible talking about the fivefold ministry the bible says in ephesians chapter 4 and verse 10 he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ so there is enough evidence in the scripture that there is an office for the teacher there is an office for the pastor there is an office for the evangelist and the apostle then there is an office for the prophet if there is an office for the prophet then there is a realm of being we call the prophetic and everyone under the sound of my voice through this teaching you need to learn how to be prophetic now our text for today is taken from Acts chapter 2 verse 17. The reason why a lot of people don't have enough understanding on the prophetic is because we have not spent time to get to know what the Lord have to say concerning the prophetic. But in Acts chapter 2 17, the Bible said, And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see dreams, and your old men shall dream dreams. Now the Bible makes us to understand that in the last days, there is going to be the outpouring of the Spirit of God. And this outpouring of the Spirit of God will culminate into three major happenings. The first happening is that there is going to be the availability of men and women 
who might have availed themselves to become voices through which the Holy Spirit will speak. And the Bible says that there's going to be the dimensions of vision and there's going to be dimensions of dreams. Every time you talk about prophecy, you talk about vision, you talk about dreams, you are talking about three things that are directly connected to the prophetic. You remember that Mary was a young girl when an angel of the Lord was sent from God to Mary. When this angel spoke to Mary, Mary did not have understanding. And Mary thought that the things that the angel was saying was impossible and can never come to pass. But the scripture makes us to understand that the angel went a step further and made Mary to know. In case you are finding it difficult to understand what I am telling you, you have a cousin who is called Lisbeth. And this cousin called Lisbeth was told that she was barren but even as at this time that i'm talking to you mary lisbeth is already six months pregnant now when mary received this vision received this encounter through the angelic ministry mary decided to visit lisbeth and with her visit to lisbeth she found out that whatever the angel said was true she saw her cousin called lisbeth pregnant and here mary believed that whatever the angel have said to her was possible now there are people who also don't understand why sometimes when there are prophetic demonstrations there are dimensions where some prophet goes into mentioning numbers and mentioning names and mentioning addresses now you find out here that if if if, if the angel had just said to Mary, you are going to be pregnant. It was a realm of impossibility and Mary needed more than that. So the angel said, you have a cousin. Your cousin is called Lisbeth. Now when Mary left the presence of the angel and got to Lisbeth and found out that Lisbeth was pregnant, Mary was able to believe that whatever the angel of God had said, it was possible and it will happen to her and it happened to her in the book of acts chapter 10 the bible talks about a man called cornelius now cornelius had a vision and this vision was evidently and the bible said an angel of the lord came to cornelius and he told cornelius that your prayers and your giving lifestyle has come to god as a memorial and he said to cornelius now cornelius go to joppa joppa is a specific location joppa is a city joppa could be a town joppa could be a village now when the spirit of god begins to manifest he can give you access into details in the mind of god that concern venue that concern places that concern addresses and he said when you get to joppa there is a man there called simon this Simon has a surname, her surname is Peter. In other words, this angel gave Cornelius, who was not a pastor, Cornelius, who was not an apostle, details of names. So you realize that from the New Testament perspective, even angels were bringing names. The angel said, go to Joppa, there is a guy there, he's called Simon Peter. He gave the first name and the second name. So you can see the proof of mentioning of names in scriptures. And he said, when you get to Joppa and you get to that place, this man called Simon Peter, is staying with another Simon who is a tent maker, who is a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. Now, the most important thing is not the details of the names and the address. These are meant to capture your attention and be able to bring you the word of God. Now, the word of God was for this man to come to Cornelius and declare to him what he must do. And here, through the prophetic, the household of Cornelius became born again. Now, I want to be prophetic at this minute. Someone listening to me right now, may your prophetic eyes see details. May your prophetic spirit see details. May God begin to open up things to you. These are things in the scriptures. So these are very prophetic. In the book of John, Jesus Christ talking to us said that he was going to live out and that it is expedient 
for him to go for if he doesn't go the comforter will not come it was expedient for jesus to go for if he doesn't go the comforter will not come and part of the comforting ministry of the holy spirit is that he will show us things to come somebody after today the lord is going to show you things to come the lord is going to bring you into dimensions of details the lord is going to show you deep things to the glory of god now we are going to move on to what is the prophetic when we say the prophetic what are we talking about the prophetic is a lifestyle of bringing God to man in other words the prophetic is a lifestyle where humanity has an intercourse with divinity and divinity expresses itself in humanity with information from the divine storehouse that the humanity would never have been able to have access into the prophetic is when it's a lifestyle when humanity meets divinity and divinity gives humanity access into the store of information that relates to people that relate to experiences that relate to situations whether in the past in the present or in the future the prophetic goes beyond prophesying because it is a lifestyle it is a lifestyle that is why the true example of the prophetic is not in prophesying but being an example to what you have heard the true example of the prophetic is not in declaring what you have heard but rather modeling or behaving what you have heard what is the prophetic the prophetic is to hear the voice of god and to respond to the voice of god the prophetic is to hear the voice of god and to respond to the voice of god god's thought for us are much more higher than our thought for ourselves and because our thoughts are limited there is a thought of god that is unlimited and every time god shares some of this thought with us we are now moving in the place of the prophetic it is god's desire to share his thought with his creation he want to share his thought concerning his plans concerning nations concern organization with his creation god want to do that the fact that his thought are higher than our thought doesn't mean this thought are unknowable this thought can be revealed to us he can give us access into this thought what is the prophetic the prophetic is hearing from god for others the prophetic is hearing from god for others it is also speaking to others on behalf of god so when a man is going to be prophetic you need to come into a dimension where you can hear from god you first have to be able to hear from god and when you hear from god you speak to others on the behalf of god you speak to others on the behalf of god so if you truly want to function in the prophetic all you need is to learn how what it means to understand and to hear from the throne room perspective if you want to be prophetic all you need is to come to a realm where you can learn to understand and to hear from god then you have to understand how to communicate what you have heard from God to others. So the prophetic is in two sides. Being able to hear from God for others and being able to speak to others on behalf of God. Now the first aspect of the prophetic, which is hearing from God on behalf of others. Let me address it a little more than I move. So the first aspect is being able to hear. You cannot speak for God until you have heard from God. You cannot be a voice of revelation to others if God has not spoken to you. Until your ear is on the heart of God, till the words of God can penetrate your spirit, you have no prophetic right to declare in the name of the Lord. 
so the hearing is very important many people want to speak on behalf of God but they are not ready to wait till they hear from God and that is why there are many people with genuine prophetic gifts but these gifts are being corrupted they want to speak without hearing you need to come to the dimension where you will be able to wait have tenacity to abide in his presence to hear from God so you can speak on behalf of God I want you to understand that as long as you are born again you are a believer you can hear from God this was not so in the Old Testament but in the New Testament it is so for the spirit is given to us the scripture I read in Acts chapter chapter 217 the outpouring of the spirit gives you access into it the outpouring of the spirit brings you to that dimension where you can hear from God and when you are able to hear from God then you can speak in the name of God it is very possible for every single believer to hear from God so the first function of the prophetic is hearing from God the second function of the prophetic is speaking to others on the behalf of God you see God has made us a trumpet type being we have deep within us a spirit a soul and the body the spirit the soul and the body when God speaks to you you will hear it in your spirit and your spirit will bring it to your soul where you have your emotions your mind and it communicates it to the body now after you have heard from God you will need how to communicate what you have heard from God I need you to understand that God is a speaking God everyone on the sound of my voice one way or the other you have heard the voice of God before you have heard the voice of God before he is a speaking God Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 to 3 Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 to 3 the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 1 to 3 in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said let there be light and there was light God the word God said means God spoke that means that God is a speaking God he desires to speak all generation it is the desire of God to speak God likes talking in first Samuel chapter 3 the Bible says that Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli and the word of the Lord was precious in those days there was no open vision now whilst Samuel was lying down in the verse 4 of first Samuel chapter 3 the Bible said that the Lord called Samuel the Lord called Samuel God used his mouth to call Samuel he mentioned the name Samuel God wants to talk God likes talking as you are listening to me God is talking to you in the book of Acts chapter 13 verse 1 verse 2 the Bible said and they ministered unto the Lord Acts chapter 13 2 and they ministered to the Lord and fasted well Acts chapter 13 2 as they ministered to the Lord and fasted the Holy Ghost said separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them the Holy Spirit is a speaking spirit it is his desire to speak to you God want to speak to you everyone under my, my voice God has spoken to you before but you never knew it was the voice of God because you have not been taught how to hear the voice of God this is the part one of today's lesson